straight to the G20 summit that's kicking off as we speak. World leaders are arriving in Argentina for the crucial G20 summit. But even before the summit begins, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi was down on business. Just a short while ago, PM Modi met Chinese President Xi Jinping. The two countries held a bilateral meeting before the opening ceremony of the G20 meet Narendra Modi, inviting Xi Jinping to India for an informal meeting next year. He said that he is waiting eagerly to meet his friend Xi again. This year is for our Dvipakshya Sabandha. It is very good and very important. I have also been thinking that the next year will be better than that. In Wuhan, we will have our informal summit हमारे संबंधों में एक मील का पत्थर था इससे हमारे एंगेजमेंट को नया मोमेंटम मिला और हमारे सहयोग के लिए कई नए आयाम भी खुले अगले वर्ष इनफॉर्मल समिट के लिए हम आपका भारत में स्वागत के लिए बहुत ही उत्सुक हैं एक्सलेंसी हमारी मुलाकातों द्वारा लीडर्स के स्तर पर हमारे द्विपक्षीय सहयोग सहयोग का रिव्यू और इस संदर्भ में हमारे दिशा निर्देश मोमेंटम को बनाए रखने में सहायक है Now, earlier, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke at the meeting of the BRICS countries on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Buenos Aires. हमने सभी देशों से एफ मानकों के कार्यान्वयन का आग्रह किया है आतंकवादियों के नेटवर्क उनकी फाइनेंसिंग और उनकी आवाजाही को रोकने के लिए संयुक्त राष्ट्र के काउंटर टेररिज्म फ्रेमवर्क को मजबूत करने हेतु ब्रिक्स और जी ट्वेंटी देशों को साथ मिलकर काम करना होगा आर्थिक अपराधियों और भगोड़ों के विरुद्ध हमें मिलकर काम करने की आवश्यकता है And now we have uh, World is One's uh, principal diplomatic correspondent, uh, Siddhant Sibyl, joining us live from Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. Uh, Siddhant, this G20 is a crucial one, but even before it officially kicks off, so much action prior to it, especially with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. A lot of actions at the G20 summit, especially when it involves the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Two, diploma, two important diplomatic events. First, of course, the informal BRICS event, which took place in which he talked about the issue of terror and radicalization. Then his big meeting with the Chinese President Xi Jinping, uh, where he not only invited the Chinese President, but he also recalled his meetings on the sidelines of SCO and the BRICS uh, meeting, which took place in Johannesburg. He also said that the momentum between the two countries have been continuing uh, recalling uh, the Wuhan uh, famous uh, summit, the Wuhan informal summit. He said that it was, uh, it was a milestone in the relationship between Beijing and New Delhi. Both Beijing and New Delhi keen to make sure that the momentum continues in 2019 as well when uh, the another informal meet is going to take place when the Chinese president was going to visit uh, India. So a lot of uh, big bang events uh, even before the G20 starts and G20 is going to start just a short while from now from approximately like 20 minutes from now the g20 will officially kick off in which india will be focusing on many issues whether it's the issue of terror or whether it's the issue of uh, fugitive economic offenders which have already been mentioned by the indian prime minister at the BRICS informal meet and uh, earlier yesterday uh, when he addressed a yoga event here in buenos aires and of course it's a jam-packed uh, day for the indian prime minister as he's going to take part in two important trilaterals one of course russia India and China, another Japan, America and India. Both trilaterals important for New Delhi shows New Delhi's growing stature at diplomatic stage at global economic uh, forums and of course politically also New Delhi matter ma um, important for not only Moscow, Beijing, uh, Washington and Tokyo but across the world and that is why these two trilaterals are important. Japan, America, India trilateral 
is for the first time this meeting is happening happening in the backdrop of Indo-Pacific as a concept gaining currency in our part of the world. Meanwhile, uh, the RIC meet it's happening for the second time in 12 years. This is also important given the fact that India shares ties with uh, Moscow, brotherly ties with Moscow, and a reset has happened with China. Right. And now we have a very senior Sri Lankan journalist joining us here on Fine Print. We have Mr. Iqbal Atas of the Sunday Times joining us. Mr. Iqbal Atas, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us here on World is One. Help us understand what exactly is going on over here. You have a prime minister who's lost the vote in the parliament twice. You have a cabinet that's not, you know, legitimate, so to speak. But they're busy signing deals with China. Well, at the moment, there are signs that the political turmoil is resolving itself. Uh, uh, as I'm talking to you now, President Sirisena is in a meeting with uh, leaders of political parties represented in parliament. Uh, this came about after there were several measures that were initiated during back channel moves. And uh, the speaker, who has had a hostile relationship with him, particularly after these uh, issues erupted between the legislature and the executive, met President Sirisena and they have resolved matters. So the next stage is uh, the president meeting the representatives of political parties and there have been a significant development uh, yesterday that is the Tamil National Alliance which represents uh, mostly the northern Tamil polity. They have written a letter to President Sirisena extending their support to the formation of a government by the previous administration, that is the United National Front of Ranil Vikramasinghe. It is not immediately clear whether they would accept, uh, President Sirisena would accept Vikramasinghe as the Prime Minister, but the fact that they have offered 14 of their members has made clear that the UNF now has a majority in Parliament. So it's a matter of time before they demonstrate that majority, perhaps next week. Right. Uh, uh, Iqbal Atas, uh, we also understand that the, uh, the pressure was building on President Maitripala Sirisena. Meanwhile, as support was building for ouster Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Uh, you know, if you can put that into perspective and tell us what exactly, uh, you know, is going to happen, you know, in terms of the resolution of this uh, political crisis. And more importantly, what will be the fate of these deals that have been signed with China again? Well, I don't think the deals, in my view, are going to be affected uh, at all by what's going on politically right now because those are sovereign commitments which uh, the government is, has to fulfill. But having said that, there have been apprehensions, uh, particularly when one looks at the past performance of the Rajapaksa administration and his very heavy leanings to China, both during the 30-year-old separatist war and thereafter.